Hi there, welcome to this strategy about how to be able to have students analyze visual primary sources. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. This primary source strategy is one called divided image. It's a very popular strategy that's been used for years with teachers. I'm just gonna show you a different sort of take on it in terms of looking at uh, images and how to be able to use a program like Keynote, uh, PowerPoint, or the program that I'm using here, uh, Google Slides, to be able to do this. So I have here a picture of Manifest Destiny. And this is the image that we're going to have, we want the students to analyze. And the important piece of this is, uh, the idea of here is I don't want the students to analyze the picture as a whole. I want to do it a step at a time. Now, you know, before the days of technology, we could simply just take a pair of scissors and cut up the picture and have the students see them one at a time. What, what we're going to do here is we're going to be able to um, uh, cut this picture, but we're actually not going to cut the picture. We're going to cover the picture up. So that's the difference. We're going to cover it up with shapes. I have the steps over here on the left-hand side that you can kind of follow along later. But up here on my toolbar, you're going to see that I have a series of options that I can do. I'm going to look at this one called Shape. We'll go to insert shape and now these these different options i can do arrows and call outs but under just the basic shape tool i'm going to click the first one rectangle and what i want to think now is what is the first thing i want to be revealed in this picture or basically uncovered so i'm going to pick the bottom right quadrant and this all depends on the image that you're choosing we'll talk about some tips here about which image to pick to choose later so i'm going to draw the shape like this now that shape is covering up the bottom quadrant of this. Now I want this thing to slowly reveal. So in order for that to happen, I need to go to the animation pane. And so if I go to insert animation, that brings up this window over here on the left hand side. And we're normally us and our students do the animation of having things come in. But if I go to ant, making sure that this is highlight highlighted, when I go to add animation, I'm going to change this from fade in to something that'll go away. So I'll try fade out. The choice here, I'm going to have this on click. That'll work perfect for me. And now let's do a play, a preview of what this would look like. And we can see here, there's the shape. And then when I click somewhere on the screen, that shape will then disappear. That simple. All I need to do now is do this multiple times. But here's a quick little tip that I'm going to do is I also like to be able to change the color to just a solid color. I like to use black oftentimes um, and changing the line color here as well too. I do this so that uh, as I draw more and more shapes, if there's some overlapping, it doesn't become so uh, striking and it looks like sort of a jigsaw puzzle out there. It'll just look like a, just a big black image that will show up. Okay, so now I'm gonna repeat that. Insert a shape. The second one, I'm now going to go up here. The whole time I wanna be able to think about what my final reveal will be. My final reveal is going to be this, the spirit of Columbia here, this idea of manifest destiny. So I wanna be able to not let the students see her until the very end. So here is the picture, I'm sorry, the shape. I'll go to add animation, let's do that again. Fade out on click and let's change my color again to black and my line again to black. And I'm gonna repeat that again and again. Do the shape. This time I'm gonna do something a little bit more like this. We can see her foot, but that's okay because sometimes students aren't necessarily gonna see, seeing just pieces of it. Uh, what, they won't get the idea of what, uh, what really is there and it also can, can prompt them a little bit about wondering what's coming next. Go to the animation and have that fade out do our fourth one there's our shape again add animation fade out and color and line to black this is what the point we want to be able to students will see they'll have seen all of this we're waiting for just that one final reveal in your decision to pick the to pick images, you really want to be able to think about what is the aha moment when they when that final picture comes up. So the kids really kind of have a sense of oh, there's got to be have some more conversations, some more questions about what's really happening. Not questions per se, more sort of relevations, relevations, revelations happening. All right, and here's that last piece. I need you to now also to animate that fade out. So now we'll preview this thing and see what it would look like. All right, and clicking step one, there's the bottom white, qu white qu quadrant. 
then you can have the students have questions. And the most important part, and I'll talk about this in a moment, but the idea of what kind of questions that you're asking. You want the questions to do uh, simply, I, I use the Library of Congress strategy about observe and reflect and then question. So have students do observations. Like, what do I notice? I notice there's a stagecoach. I see some farmers. And the farmers are actually, uh, they have some fenced off land. Uh, this gives me some context of things about, well, I think that it's a painting. It doesn't look like a photograph. What do I know about um, uh, I can see a little bit of a white something over here. I'm not sure what that is. And then the second part after observations or reflections, what does it mean that this is a painting or a stagecoach? Or I see farmers over here with a plow, and that plow is being pulled. looks like a manual plow. Um, so this is uh, the kid give the students an idea about kind of when and where this particular painting is. And then the last part of it, of the queue of questions, is you ask, well, what are some things we don't know? And the students should be saying, well, I don't know necessarily where this is, or I don't know necessarily what's happening in this. I, um, and they could lead them some more questions. Anyway, so let's click on the next one as I move forward. Okay, now more of the picture is revealed. What are my observations? I see trains, three of them, all heading to the left, all heading this direction. I see a bridge off in the distance and many boats. I see a beautiful sort of a sunrise um, and so forth. What do all those things mean? Well, simply if I have things moving left instead of left, that could be a, a compass direction. It could be west. Um, what does uh, the, these lines mean? What does these poles with wires? That tells me it could be telegraph or telephone. Um, what is, you can even have questions about what, do sun, what does the sunrise mean? What do the type of ships look like? All right, you see what we're doing, and then you can follow up other questions, uh, keep doing um, uh, the questions about where, uh, any more clear about when this is all right next piece comes up now we go to the bottom oh okay much more things happening here now we have a darker tone so we still have lots of things moving left it's darker it looks like there's Native Americans over here with some animals more people in the forefront now what do they mean so you can start talking about what does the darkness mean what does it look even by their body posture how they're leaning to the left and so forth what other questions that we still have? And you continue to do this on and on. Here comes our next piece. And we can see here, oh, much more dark. Uh, I see some white tip mountains and very dark clouds. More people and animals. I see bison that are uh, running to the left, but actually, yeah, very much running and fleeing. Wondering what this whole thing means. Possibly maybe another stagecoach over here. Now, here's that foot, like we mentioned before, that it l l lends us thinking about what uh, what is this. Now, theoretically, what we could have done is we could have pulled this down a little bit more if we wanted to. Now comes the final reveal, and there is uh, your aha moment. This can now have lots more conversations. But what we have done is we've created, we've put all of this image in context, have the kids really think about this, and now we can have a much broader conversation about what it means for her moving to the West, her bringing um, uh, education and technology with her and what she represents because she's not real. She's something sort of... Um, uh, godlike, mythical, and all that kind of stuff. And you have some really great conversations about this idea about manifest destiny and moving to the left, all done with using one sort of simple picture. Uh, the questions, uh, like I mentioned before, that I have used, I get, like I said, was from the Library of Congress. And here's the teacher's guide about how to be able to use these sort of visual uh, analyzing primary sources from the Library of Congress. Like I mentioned before, it's observe, reflect, and question. And this is a great little PDF to kind of t uh, give you an idea of what to be able to ask. They also have on their website uh, a, a, a tool where student you can print out for students so they can write down their observations, their reflections, and questions. Now, you could do this to a picture as its whole, but the, de the thing that I just demonstrated was dividing it up into pieces. And here are some specific kind of questions that you think you can kind of ask along the way, talking about what do you notice, what is interesting. Uh, notice about all the idea about the noticing, 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 focusing on the details per se. The, uh, I would really have the kids do this first because we really want to teach them, even at, even at the younger levels, that the, they're mini historians. We want them to only do observations first, first, not necessarily jumping to conclusions, guesses, and hypotheses. We want to be able to have evidence dictate what we think that means, and then lastly, what do we still not know? Anyway, so I hope you have some fun with that thing called divided image.